Dear students, hope you are doing great. Today my topic is an iteration. Before going to solve some questions of this topic, I would like to share some questions. The questions are, what is an iteration? My second question, when and where we use it? My third question, how do we use it? So, if you want to solve these type of questions, you must understand the answers of these three questions. Let's begin. The repetition of a mathematical or computational procedure to the result of previous application, typically as a means of obtaining successively closer approximation to the solution of underlying problem. This is the answer of my first question. Now my second question. The answer of my second question. When and where we use it? Whenever you have an equation which is non-linear in its form, which is non-linear, which is non-linear in its nature. If it's non-linear, then we don't have any exact method or analytical method to find the solution. Then there is a special technique we call iteration. We use iteration when we don't have any analytical method. My third question, how do we use it? Actually, there is specific algorithm. Specific algorithm means specific steps of calculations are required to find the solution. That can only be answered by working. Now, I tell you, let's you have nonlinear equation. What of x3 plus x plus 1, let's say you have this equation and you want its solution. If you plot this equation, I'm just sketching this roughly. It's not exact. It's just roughly. Like this. You know, this is the solution. Why this is a solution? Because if I say this equation is fx, if this equation is fx, fx is equal to x3 plus x plus 1 and from there you can say that fx is equal to 0. This is you know xx and this is y-axis or fx. So this curve means fx and this curve is 0 there only. As, as it is said fx is equal to 0. So there is only one point where this function is 0. Whenever you have to use the iteration, the range of the solution is given in the question. From where you guess that root or solution or 0 of the function must exist between this range. For this question, range of the solution is between minus 1 and 0. So this is 0 and this is let's say minus 1. So your value of the solution exists between minus 1 and 0. This means your curve passes through any point which is between minus 1 and 0. So if you want to verify either the root exists between these two values or not. We just take this fx and plug these values there and then take the other value. We will see that minus 1. As this is told in the question that this is continuous function, if it if it's continuous function, then f0 mean you have this value of fx. And when x is minus 1, 
your value is there so your function definitely crosses x axis when it this the value of this function want to go from this value to this value so there there always exist one value where your function becomes zero and that is this value so if you have different signs of the value of fx this means in the given range of x your function definitely passes through crosses through x axis that's why if it crosses through x axis where the function crosses the x axis that is what that is the value of fx because at that point fx is zero and fx zero mean the value of x the value of x means root solution or zero generally in american mathematics the value of x or the solution of any function usually called zero and in mathematics it's root or solution so these three words have same meaning so this way we use iteration now i am going to give you specific algorithm which we adopt to solve these type of questions as i told you we use specific approximation as it's told that root lies between minus 1 and 0 whenever you have this type of function you always try to express that type of function equation in this form pass so whenever we want to use iteration we express this type of function or equation into this form let's say we say and this is generally already given in the question in all a levels questions you no need to drive by yourself it's already given x n plus 1 2 x 3 minus 1 3x n square plus 1 so he himself derived this equation and now he is asking does this equation converges to this always remember whenever your this equation converges to this one means that x n plus 1 x n becomes equal because these are two successive approximation and according to the question according to the requirement they both have same answer let's say that is x so whenever it is asked is the given iterative equation converges to the above equation just replace this equation by x x 2 x cube minus 1 over 3 x square plus 1 then you simplify you will see that once again you get equation x cube plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 if this iterative equation by satisfying this result become same the above one this means 
this equation converges to same root as the root of this equation. So this way we prove is the given alternative equation converges to the above or not. So this is the way. Now in the statement of the question it is stated use this alternative formula with initial value x1 minus 0 0.5 to determine the root correct to two decimal places now x1 is given and now you know you have to use this formula if this is x1 and this value is given then you can say x2 is equal to this formula can be written this way and now you will use this value of x1 there by this you will get the value of x2 and now by using x2 you can calculate the value of x3 because new formula become 2x square 3x square last one so this way method goes on and you will perform the calculation until and unless as there is only one digit after decimal so after doing three or four steps you will see that x4 x5, x6 where you see that two consecutive 5 and x6 or any two n and x n plus 1 gives same answer correct to two decimal places that would be your final answer and one thing more let's say you get answer minus 0.756 and next answer also you get minus 757 as it stated in the question after correct to two decimal places after two decimal places mean these two values are same there is 7.75 and there is 0.75 now what do you do? Just drop this. Actually, you get 0.75. Now, you need to write, just suppose that this is 0 0.750. If this is 0 0.750, then the lower limit of this would be 0.745 and the upper limit is 0.755. And once again, these two values can be verified in the given x3 plus x plus 1. Once you will use this value for x and second you will use this value. And you will see once again between these two values, sign of the function, the, value, the sign of the value of function for the value of x will change. If the value of functions is changing by these values of x, this will confirm that your iterative solution is correct. So this way, basically, we do the questions of iteration. One thing, the last thing that is very important, as you know, I am promoting mathematics. My main mission, my main aim
to, to promote mathematics in Pakistan. To promote mathematics in Pakistan. So, encourage us. Encourage me. How? Just subscribe our channel. What we want? Your subscription. Never forget. Never forget. Just put your share. Put your share in good effort, in good motivation. Subscribe our channel. That's it. What we need from you. This is a great encouragement from your side. Thank you.